if I did that in a conference, there'd be kind of 20 people in the room of which yes. some of them might be interested. Whereas by putting it on YouTube, YouTube kind of works its magic and finds the people who are interested in it. And suddenly it's like, wow, I've never spoken and talked about my research to that many people before. Something that's really key maybe to understand for people, I think, is that it doesn't have to be your own research. And I think the other thing I want to get across as well as kind of it doesn't have to just be your research is that if you can tie it in with things that you're doing anyway, then you can minimise how much extra time it takes, but you can also maximise the benefit of those things that you're doing anyway. So just to kind of explain what I mean by those things, I think when I say it doesn't have to be your research, you know, it could be like someone could do a short two minute summary of a paper that they've read imagine kind of whatever discipline you're in i'm sure you could have a youtube channel that does um two or three minute summaries of different papers and you could do a one paper every week or one paper every month and that kind of forces you to actually read those papers it's similar to um i have a monthly newsletter that's kind of the best things i've read all month and one of the best or biggest benefits for me of doing that is that it forces me to actually read papers. So often it gets to the end of the month and I'm thinking, oh, I've been really busy. I haven't, I've got loads of tabs open in Chrome and I haven't read the papers because I've got a newsletter going out. It forces me to read them so that I can write about it. And I think people can do the same where, yeah, read a paper, record a short summary, um, or it could be a tutorial. So if you're learning to do something, then record a short tutorial showing others how to do it um or even kind of teaching i generally have this kind of principle that if i have to explain something to one person fine but the moment i have like the exact same call or the exact same kind of session with a second person i then think actually maybe i should put this online because it will benefit more people as well as myself but it will also save me time in the future because if i'm going to have to spend five or ten minutes showing someone every few months I may as well just record it and make it available and I think as well you know it could be conference presentations yes kind of discuss with the conference and you know make sure you're not kind of breaking any copyright or anything but I've got various like keynote lectures or what kind of short 10-15 minute conference presentations I've done where I've waited a month or so after the conference and then uploaded a very similar presentation to YouTube and I mean, one of, it's not the biggest in the series, but one of my lectures as part of the sports biomechanics lecture series has, I think from memory, been viewed about 15 or 16,000 times. And I've never done a conference presentation with anywhere near that many people. My, if I did that in a conference, there'd be kind of 20 people in the room of which yes. some of them might be interested. Whereas by putting it on YouTube, YouTube kind of works its magic and finds the people who are interested in it. And suddenly it's like, wow, I've never spoken and talked about my research to that many people before. The full conversation will be available soon on the Science in the Break channel, which I'll link to up here. But for now, check out my tips and tricks for social media use within academia down here.